morning. 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 Welcome to what kind of Pokemon trainer are you? Uh, yay. <laughs> so my name is Riftwing Designs. I go by Rift. I'm currently All Might. I will be giving a presentation on My Hero Academia in an hour and a half after this. So if you're interested in that, one of the things that I like to do, as I mentioned earlier, is I'm a motivational speaker. I like to talk about why you like things, get into the psychology, even though I'm definitely not a psychology major or have done anything except use Google. <laughs> Are any of you an actual expert in so so sociology, psychology? Kind of. I mean, yeah, I had to do a lot. Of I did a lot of research. Because well, I'm glad that you are able to compensate. Yes, I did. Fantastic. We have our resident expert professor over here as well. Hello. So if I say anything incorrectly, please, I am not going to claim to be an expert, but I'm going to claim to say that I've put together a really cool conversation that we're going to have over the next hour. And it is going to be interactive. I want questions, comments. Be sure to take turns. Raise your hand, respect others, don't tease. We can laugh at each other, but it's probably because we've all been there in those same nerdy situations, okay? <laughs> Are there any other ground rules that you guys want to set before we get started? Pokemon are awesome? Yeah. Okay, cool, I like that. All right, so we're gonna go through these things during our presentation today. We're gonna talk about the five W's of introspection. Can anyone tell me what introspection is? Big word. <laughs> I love that I'm in a classroom going, all right, what is introspection today, students? Uh, introspection, thinking about yourself. This whole panel is about you. What kind of trainer are you? What is it that you like about Pokemon? Why do you like these things? What's going on? We're going to talk about your teams. So I know you all have Pokemon that you like. Think about those six, only six, no extras, no spares, no swaps, no going into the computer. How do you experience the world around you in the real life? And also personality, if we have time. This one's a little tricky and really fun, and it is something that you can do a lot of work on afterwards, and it works for any genre. And of course, questions can happen at any time. So, first question. When did you start playing? We've got a whole bunch of Pokemon over a whole bunch of years at this point. Didn't we just celebrate an anniversary recently? 23rd. Yeah. So, when you think about it in terms of generations, old folks and then the young. So, over here, all these games started to come out between the 80s and now. And when you think about why you like certain Pokemon games, what makes you think about your first game? You always have an impression on the first one that really made you say, this is cool. I like this. So I want to see, okay? Anyone start with you? Cool? All right, we got Luigi up here. How about the next one? Well, it, it's, it's complicated. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and everybody's got their different colors. We'll talk about that next. All right, then we've got, we've got Sapphire and Diamond, Emerald, Ruby, Gems, yeah? All right, black and white, okay, X and Y. Everybody's like, I'm already playing by And anyone most of recently with Sun and Moon? All right, welcome. So when you think about your first game, why do they give us different colors in the game? Do you play with your friends? Do you play with your friends, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Sure. Different colors being introverted or extroverted. Different starters when they put yellow out. So you've got Pikachu now. So did you feel like you were more associated with people that had the same color as you? Would you rather play a blue blue or you want to do opposites? Opposites. Why? Opposites are trick. Because they had exclusive Pokemon. Yes! Trading. One had exclusive Pokemon that you could only find in one certain color, so you had to interact with others. I have two younger sisters, and we all made sure to have the different colors, and every day we would do the, the trades with the wire. You know? <laughs> Old school, right? Yeah. 
right? Oh, so you had to get in, you had to make it sink, sometimes it didn't work. And then later on you had mystery gifts, which was amazing, right? So you're, you're trading with people, you're, you're interacting with them in a different way in order to have fun and you've got to catch them all. all. Yes, all right, you guys are great. And then of course we have this thing, my favorite. <laughs> So they're starting to break out of the console world, of Pokemon Snap, and now we've got apps and things like that. So when you think about it, even though we're talking about this half of the spectrum here, automatically when you have a conversation, like I'm saying old school, yeah, I'm proud that I was playing when it was really pixelated and ancient. Does that mean I'm better than anyone else? Who said yes? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are troublemakers. No, it should not. And that's one of the things that creates rivalry, right? You have to think about why is it that you're saying that you are enjoying these more than others? Does it matter if you guys started on the most recent one? Does it matter what's going to happen with the next release? There's a lot of history and background, and then you start to learn more about the different types of Pokemon. Some of them, again, they're not available in the newer games. You have to do really funky things. You have to get exclusives online. It's a lot of work. So we're talking from here to here. We have generations, right? So you've got, everybody heard about the baby boomers, the older folks that were born after the Great Wars. Generation X, which was more of like the hippies and the rockers. And then the millennials, which is really where it started. So some people would say the Gen Xs started playing Pokemon and they were more of a younger version. The millennials just popped right in. Can I sit here? Gen Z, Gen Z. Who likes that? You guys, you have to sit. There's no stand. All right, guys, you have some suits up in the corners on both wings. Yeah, you guys can sit over there. I see. Yep. And then the millennials. Right? So you have these different mindsets. And for those of you that have ever worked in the real world, you will realize that the generation that changes your mindset. The same way that if you think about the different games, when you are older, you tend to have more practicality, right? You want to make sure that you've got a good living wage and that you work your time and that those young folks, they're not whippersnappers. And so what does that mean? That means that when you have something similar talk about Pokemon or video games, those things that came up with your generation, you can relate to them more. So one of the things we're going to talk about with Pokemon is how you relate more to people that share those common interests. In order to do that, we have to figure out what those common interests are. So that's what we're going to spend the presentation talking about. Any questions on this? So we've got something new, <laughs> right? So we saw a preview of Sword Shield. We know that there are three starters, one of which is sitting in the corner. <laughs> we have Grookey with us today. So Sword Shield, automatically we're going back into that format, two different games. We only know that there's like some kind of maybe wolfy legendary creature thing maybe. But you're gonna have to first choose whether you're a sword or a shield. Can you pick, have you picked, which game you're gonna play just based on the name? No. Yes. yes. All right, hands or sword? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, thirteen, yep, shield! <laughs> it's almost even. Who doesn't know or doesn't care? Okay, so we're exactly spit the <laughs> one third, two thirds, one third, three thirds, okay. So yeah, everybody, it's about me. Why? Why is that? Did the, did the Pokemon creators have this amazing way of breaking it out so that they knew that it would be split evenly? Yeah. Maybe they're magic. Yeah. I love Nintendo. What can Lots I say? Of previous games. <laughs> yeah, it's happened in previous games as well. And then we get to this whole crazy idea of based off of one little video. This is by Clinkors. It's C-L-I-N-K-O-R-Z. She does amazing art, and she does sell these prints and shirts and things. So please, if you like how cute those are, support Clinkers. I have had commissions from her before. She does amazingly super cute art of all the Pokemon. They come in charms and stickers and things. Yes. Total plug for her. She's amazing. So, based off there is yes. Is she here? Like, no. Aww. I'm actually a Washington DC based, and I aww. see her at some of the nerd conventions, but yeah. No. You, you find her easily online. 
which hydrate quick. <laughs> mm. So we have three starters. We have this cute little bunny here. What's its name? Squirrel bunny. You guys are amazing. All right, we got. <laughs> and over here. Oh. Oh. So, <laughs> yes. Why is he so sad? We don't know yet. Why is he so sad? Or maybe he's so adorable. Tears of joy, maybe. Yeah. Probably think he's just the timid child of the three. Like, oh, are you like a gym dude? Why is he so sad? Yes, <laughs> question. He's sad because the one of you where he looks like this, someone stole his football. We stand firmly against bullying in this panel, don't we? So wait, who is gonna pick? Our beautiful crybaby water type. Why why do we have these affinities for the starters? We've only seen the starters. Is it the type? Do you really think it's because it's a grass type? Yes. Yes? yes. Yeah. All right. For those who said grass, who wants to tell me why? Okay, and the blue. Me? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Um, because fire is always strongest and you always start off in like a grassy area. Oh. So you're always stronger than your Pokemon that you're attacking. So it's really strong against the bug and grass types. Okay, so your starter type helps you to get further in the game faster if you're a fire. Yes. Okay, yeah? I think it's because of the weakness situation. Water is usually very bulky with all with a lot of HP, so it can handle pretty much <laughs> fire types just takes things out in one hit. And grass type can't really do that because it has five weaknesses. Okay. Thank you. And that's what I love about grass types. I always pick a grass type every time. All right. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, so fire types are the best because they look the best. <laughs> Ooh, that's a judgment right there. It's spicy. Okay. Yes. I will not stand for this. Fire type bias. No, bias! Wait, that's a big word right there, bias. What is bias? Uh, having a certain type of... Uh, it's a word because like, I can't figure... It's like being... Influence. Yes. Influence? Yeah. It's multiple, more, more multiple than one. Mm -hmm. when, you, when, you're, when you're thinking a certain way, you may not even know it. Yeah. Yes? It's having a, an opinion that goes over what may be the fact. Yes. When you're using facts to find a falsity that improves the way you're thinking. So you want to know that they are the best? You will say they're the best even when you see things that say, oh no, they're actually not really that good against water. You're like, that's okay. They're good against everything else. That really makes up for it. And I'm not saying you're thinking that, but it's an example. There's a comment back here. Yeah. That's the nice the word because in generation one, three, and this generation, it's red and blue colored versions. Yes. Red and blue are the preferred. Red and blue, red and blue. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Good comments. Yeah, in the back. It goes with the red and blue uh, because red and blue are the two most popular colors. Uh, originally, when red and blue came out, yes. it was known as like the male and female colors or oh, gender. also top two colors chosen in a survey. At least. Yes, you are absolutely correct. So let's play a quick game with that. So the comment <laughs> was, red and blue are the most popular colors. For humans, this is scientifically proven. So if I said that I want you to pick a tool, any tool, and I want you to pick a color, how many of you picked a red hammer? Okay? Scientifically, that's like usually 50% of people when they're like bang, 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 that's what they will pick. You could do it like it's a magic trick. Like pick a tool, pick a color, red hammer. Right? You're not going to pick a screwdriver or like some kind of magical, like, you know, it's, 
it's going to be something that you think of really quickly, and that's because of bias. So we are trained to think about those first. Now, why is that? I don't have the answer, yeah? Anything else is schema. Schema? What's schema? Schema is a set of pathways that your mind chooses, like linking what? So linking blue to cold, mm -hmm. or linking red to hot. Yep. Or linking the first thing that comes to your mind when thinking of tools is hammer. Yep. Yes. Your brain is actually programmed to make shortcuts so that it doesn't have to think as hard. And that's part of the preconceptions and biases. Thank you. Yes, there's coming over here. Um, my reason for being red, really quick, was just because my I grew up in a big family. Yeah. So everybody picked blue and green, so I just. Now I got to it. I got to go all the way through it with it, you know? Right. Yes. That's good, though. Thank you. Okay. So these are all totally acceptable reasons for you to say that's why I like my color. Whether it's fire, grass, water, which starter is going to be? Now, here's another question. So most, uh, two-thirds of you have picked, is there anyone who hasn't picked a starter for this game yet? Yeah, okay, so about two-thirds of you have picked a starter. For those of you that haven't picked, and if you're going to play, why did you not pick yet? Good, I'm gonna hold that idea. Back. Me? Yes. Um, I'm still new to Pokemon and I the council I have, half the screen is busted, so oh. I could only play half <laughs> technically half of the game. <laughs> okay. So I, I have to wait for a new like newer game to at least get the full experience. Okay, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's okay. Wait. That's a valid excuse, yes. Uh I've got three reasons. Three reasons. Oh. Let's go. Rapid is, fire. What is I have not been in the game search for a while. Okay. Uh, last generation I played was the third gen. Uh, second reason is that I'm a very greedy person when it comes to Pokemon, so I will try to find all the starters I can. Yep. As in first gen, I always had the three original starters with me whenever I had the chance. Yep. Um, and thirdly, it's mainly because um, I do want to try out each of their abilities and be able to see like, which one I would prefer. Mm -hmm. Though, granted, when I was a kid for first gen, the first one I would always pick. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so let's get into that right now. We have our beautiful three starters here. I'm going to make you guys do some activity. I want everyone that picks our beautiful, wonderful Squirtle to come up to this corner. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. That's, that's when I got really soft for Charmander, 
Okay. So, great presentation. Again, round of applause. Fire ground or fire flying. Fire flying. 
buggy is running really fast. Helicopter. Yeah. Fire electric. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it feels like fire electric. Fire electric. Fire electric. <laughs> 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 fire electric. Fire fire fair. Fair. That is fire one fair. of the biggest, most exciting parts of a new game is the fans <laughs> brainstorming what the forms are going to be. Whether you see those cool like concept sketches that people put online talking about the types, thinking about it, it's the excitement of something new that really brings you into the game. And that's one of my favorite parts about it is just making new Pokemon, right? Expanding the universe which we're all in love with and finding something that's cool and picking the ones that you like. And then, this is where we're gonna go for the, the next half hour, figuring out why it is that you like that. Why is it that you are all about this particular one. Is it the type? Is it the look? Is it what they can do to beat everyone else? Why? What are you going to do with this Pokemon in the game? Why are you choosing it as your partner? So think about that now. Really quickly, I just want to go over regions. So we talked about a uh, region that was fan-made to go into this map. And of course, now we're going to be adding, I'm assuming all here since it's kind of like Englandish maybe. Well, for the next region. Many people are speculating it's going to be linked to Kalos. Into, into Kalos, like with uh, Landbridge? Because right. Galar is the region that Kalos was at war in for that. Yeah. This is a conceptual map by Steve Sharon. But the idea is there's all kinds of different lands. I mean, you've got Alola, which is the corniest and most amazing one ever, because it's got like all the Hawaiian themes. Now we're going to go into like Scotland, Englandish areas. It's just another way to say, oh, do, do you? Is, is that something that you're familiar with, or is it something so foreign that it, may, it makes you be interested in that as well? We talked about this already, but one thing I wanted to bring up on home town. It's not where you are; it's who you are. When you pick that starter, when you have that first game, it becomes a part of you. What we've talked about already is that the games help to form your opinions and your memories of the future. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Any questions on that? Any comments? Stories? Okay. Now, this is the fun slide. Why? Why do you enjoy it? Do you want to become a person with all the badges? Do you want to? Breed Pokemon. Don't know how those are get there. Do you want to try and catch the hardest and the greatest and the most legendary Pokemon? Do you just want to have a cool rat and make it the strongest it can be? <laughs> yes. Or do you want to dress up and do shows? Okay, comment. My, I started off with platinum. Yep. The whole reason I started is so that I could clean the badges. I just like cleaning them. I just want to clean them. It's so satisfying. Cleaning the badges, petting your Pokemon, grooming. Yes. Okay. What? Who else? What? Why do you play? Yep. Um, I really like the contests in the Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because I generally like to keep or pretty Pokemon, including Ditto because that's pretty. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. Okay. Pretty Pokemon. Thank you, yes. I love just to make friends with them, to make them pets instead of just finding new creatures. Make them friends and see the love levels go higher. Yeah, I like that too. Okay, in the back. My favorite part is the story behind it, like just the character adventuring. That's pretty, pretty lit. The story and the adventure, yes. Seeing the <coughs> characters all the NPCs and seeing how the how all of them interact. Seeing how they each, seeing what motivates each of the teams. Is there are is, did they have a good motivation, but they their intentions were good, but it turned out bad. Motivation for the, all of the characters. Yeah. Yes. Over here. I enjoyed just trying to unlock all the mega evolutions. Mega evolutions, getting to that final level, beating the challenge. Yes. Uh, the story behind the actual game, like the reason why you're out on the adventure, or why the the purpose of you just going out and trying to get all of the, like the behind the scenes stories. Behind the scenes stories, good. There's a couple over here, yes. Um, uh, I think the first five seconds did really well. Uh, it was somewhat challenging, but also rewarding. And, um, you know, sometimes you actually did have to grind a bit to you know, beat the next game. 
and uh, something I haven't had fun with with the six and seven where you use EXP share before the first gym. So um, <laughs> I think the first time did really well making the battle uh, with the Making it hard. Now, that's something you can bring up about all old school games, right? They were a challenge. Like, you could not beat a game without playing it for seven hours. Yeah. There's no shortcuts. There's no speed runs. It's literally you have to go through it. And there were a lot of times where you could not get past a certain thing. Like, there were weird jumps you had to do, or there were really hard bad guys, and you really, like, there was no pattern. You just had to get through it. And then you couldn't pause the game, so you had to turn off the TV and hope your parents didn't see that the game console was still on. Yeah. That's another story entirely. Thank you for sharing. Yes? I just like exploring. Exploring. That's fine. I love exploring. Over here. Um, I did this weird thing where I go through and I meticulously catch every single Pokemon, but only in a Pokeball, even the legendaries. In a normal Pokeball? Yeah. All of the Pokemon in a normal Pokeball. Okay, is that weird, guys? No, no, that's cool. That's like a lock kind of thing, like a nuzzle lock, where you have to keep the first Pokemon you catch, and it doesn't matter. You can't choose who's on your party. Yes, great. A uh, rookie in the back, and then the red. Um, nowadays, it's more of a nostalgia thing. It kind of takes me back to when I was a kid and didn't have responsibilities. <laughs> so it's just fun to relive that, but with a completely new experience. Yeah, having fun, nostalgia. Yes. I really like the designs of the Pokemon because some can be really cute and some can be really like really cool looking. Yeah, cute, cool designs, the different characters, yes. Um, I like the breeding aspects, trying to get that perfect Pokemon and then trying to trade it off to other people for other Pokemon and then breeding those. Right. <laughs> perfect stats, breeding, trading, great. In the back of the corner here, yes. Um, so my favorite part is throughout any of the games that I played, because I started with Diamond and Pearl, is actually like, making treats for Pokemon. So, making treats? Yeah, so making like coffins, candy, yeah. all that type of stuff, and going to, comp and, like, going to the um, contest, all the really kind of like different stuff like that is just the best. So are you a Pokemon connoisseur? <laughs> you know, so. Maybe. Okay, in the very back, I saw another hand. Yes? Oh, yeah. A couple other people took the words out of my mouth, but my favorite part is just exploring, and I actually only watched the anime, so I'm just picturing myself as an actual Pokemon trainer, and my favorite part would be exploring, and I'd probably want to do research with Professor Oak. Okay, exploring, <laughs> yes. Blue, and then it'll be green, yes. The part is literally exploring and learning strategies. Because it's all about the things that we have to have strategy. Like you're not going to go all there like, what's up? <laughs> you have to have like, you have to like have plan strategy and stuff before you like go. Strategy, planning, making, taking the time to think about what you're doing. Thank you for your Rare, but fantastic, yes. Uh, the mini games, I know in the original gen, they had obviously a casino, but if you go to the stadium games, they have all those fun mini games that I, Still wondering why they never made a follow up with that, or just like a condensed version of all the mini games. Like, you know, uh, I don't know if anybody remembers Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. Pokemon Stadium? Mini games. Edgar Splash, Run Right to Town Run. Yes. Um, my personal favorite is the Lucky Tongue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little fun things on the side, yes. This is a bit of an odd one, but I honestly want to see Pokemon utilized more in their world. For example, well, let's say you're a cop. A cop wouldn't need a gun in the Pokemon world because they have living tasers for <laughs> their pets. They, they're called electric types. Yep. <laughs> or, heck, Professor Oak, why don't you have a Ditto for your partner considering Ditto can transform into any Pokemon ever. <laughs> so you could just have, have it imitate one of the trainer's Pokemon that sends to you and then study the two of them, compare and contrast. How do you think the Meltdown came around? <laughs> <laughs> well, well said, Professor. Good points, thank you. All right, any other comments? Yes? Um, I like, I really loved when they started making it so you could like, play with the Pokemon, and especially making it so that your bond is strong enough for like, a really weak Pokemon, mm -hmm. so that you still battle really well, even though you expect them to fail, like a magic harp or something like that, and you yep. don't let them evolve into Uranus. 
Yes, yeah, so bringing, bringing them from a place that it's just like adopting a, like a little sad pound kitty, you know, you got to take care of them, you know, get the meat on the bones, and then see them thrive. Yeah, thank you. And then over here, yes. Professor, I heard about this big brown called me too. <laughs> what was that? But that doesn't really tie into the presentation at all. But thank you. <laughs> we'll take that off one, Professor. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so we've all talked about <laughs> we've all talked about different reasons why we like Pokemon. All of them are 100% valid and also fantastic. That's why we're all in this room here together. It doesn't matter if you want to be the trainer that shines the badges or the person that wants to raise a Pokemon from the start. It doesn't matter if you want to do wonder trades or if you just really like the theme song. <laughs> I have all of the soundtracks. I, It's my thing. I'm such a nerd. It doesn't matter though because it's still awesome. Yeah, it is. So the things that we do together help us to figure out why we play. Also, collecting them all. That's actually impressive. That's the it's an article on uh, the New York Post, actually, that I got that from. It's slightly scary, but it's impressive. Impressive. Yes, that is takes commitment. So we said collecting. Being the very best. Who wants to just beat all of the elite leagues? Okay, a few of you. The challenge, right? Or making your own challenge, such as the, like I said, the lock challenges. Picking and only using plain balls, yes. Oh, uh, no, I thought you were. Yep. Yeah. Challenges. Making a game, so if you beat it once, what do you want to do in the next time? Do you want to try a, a harder starter? Do you want to only have a certain type? Speed runs. Locks. Friendship. Yeah. <laughs> Battles. Okay, so we have Pokemon battles here at this convention. Have any of you guys done those against the RIT gym? Lost. A couple in the back. Lost? Oh no! But that's good because that's a challenge. Cool. Alright. I'm missing anything else. The answer should be obviously yes, but there are <laughs> there are quite a few. So we got uh, one, two, three. Yes. Okay, so I just played because it's really cute, you know, it kind of it's nice just to relax and be like, oh yeah, and it feels, and it's a good accomplishment, you know, to be people like you need four by reviving all of your Pokemon constantly. Yeah. <laughs> the cop, anyway, so good. <laughs> when they do it. It's, it's funny. It feels like cheating when they do it. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes. Uh, adventure. And then just being able to go on about, you know. I think I have to put that in the slide. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. I like, I like getting those books that have like a list of all of them so far and just like remembering them from that. Like the, I, you can tell they're very good at character design because there are like hundreds of them. Like they're probably going to be pushing a thousand after the printer and like getting close to it. And yet, it's still easy to like, oh, it's that one. Yeah. Like just Somehow we can all remember a thousand Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, magical. Okay. Yes, play for the Pokemon. Whoa. Okay, in the back I saw hands. Oh, I like like learning all the little details and like backstories of the Pokemon, um, and like learning what makes them like some of the stories you find out like the like Marowak with his mouth and eyes, mother skull on his head. Like that's the that's like one of the like darkest ones, but like I just like little like little weird facts. All the actual descriptions yeah. of the Pokemon that you may not even care about when you're playing. Yeah. Can we, yeah. can we get some F's in the chat for Spoink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, makes you happy. Have fun. Enjoy the adventure. These are all fantastic. You guys are a great audience. So we have <laughs> we have about ten minutes. I know, right? It's so sad it's only an hour long. And then we're going to go into questions. So the one thing, uh, oh, train battles. This was like a photo shoot on a New York subway. I thought that was gorgeous. <laughs> and of course, no one has mentioned this yet. <gasps> Crossovers! Yeah. Oh no. So we have dark types, which include uh, Sonic. <laughs> Sonic 2, yes. 
So there, there are, you don't have to limit it just to Pokemon, right? They're creatures, and if you have your own personal fantasy world, you can mix and match. There's no rules in your own mind. If you want to have another dragon from a different show, if you want to have Digimon and Pokemon living in joy and harmony, I mean, come on. Who doesn't want Gatomon? I'm just saying. Gatomon! Yeah. So she's got Gatomon, we're good. Yes, comment in the orange. Yes? Yes. So, all of these are, uh, are fantastic reasons, and they're all different. We could have every single one of you present. It would be here until noon. It would be fantastic. You would learn something. But since, oh, 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 somebody mentioned shiny, didn't they? Yeah. Evolution does not like change. It's so aggravating. Come on, a minute. Look, shinies. Some of these shinies. Why? Why do we like shinies? It's something different. It's rare. They're shiny. They are shiny. Different colors. Some of them actually look better. Yes. It's harder to find them. It is harder to find them. Yes, they are very, very hard. No, and in some of the more recent games, less. But yes. Yes. It puts that like the like You want to find it? It's like it's like you have the chance. Yeah. It's like if an ultimate rare Pokemon came out suddenly, you're like. Oh my god! And then what happens when they run away? And it's like, no! You no, rage quit the game. It's the worst thing to break the game. Don't do that. How do you feel when you catch the shinies or the super legendaries? Right? You feel amazing. And that's because it releases those feel good chemicals in your brain. It's kind of like doing drugs, kids. No! <laughs> it's much healthier to catch shiny Pokemon, but it's that same it's in your brain. <laughs> when you complete the Pokedex, when you beat the champions, when you're able to get to the goal that you want, it makes you feel amazing. And that's exactly one of the reasons why it may be a little addictive. <laughs> just a little. Just, just, just a little. Like I said, this is a healthy addiction, kids. <laughs> good, good. So we're going to finish off our presentation with ultimate six Pokemon teams, as I threatened earlier. Now, you have a picture? This is my picture. My trainer, uh, she like my emo cat girl. Yeah. I always love Magikarp. Team Rocket, Magikarp. I'm like, come on, like, you know. Magikarp is going to become something amazing. When I finally figured out what it became, I was like, dude. I love dragons. This is like, yes. Then we've got Crustle here, which is just super cute. I love bug types. Huge. That's it. It's not because they're amazing, they're just cute. And also, I really am a geology nerd. I'm, I did some here when I was in school. I love it, right? Paris, because he's also super cute, and I love mushrooms. Same thing for Crusola. I would have her use hearted so many times. You couldn't get through her, right? The tough, like, the toughness was just so powerful. It didn't matter that she wasn't the best, she would just never get knocked out. And then, uh, Breloom, that's how you say it. I love dinosaurs <laughs> and mushrooms. Did I mention mushrooms? <laughs> yes, literally. Oh, and then, uh, Noibur, because again, another cute dragony kind of thing. So I do it mostly for cuteness and the animals, the real animals and the mushrooms that I like. <laughs> so it's not. The best team, there are so many Pokemon that I could have otherwise chosen, but I realized by making my six person team and thinking about it, I spent like a few days on this on and off, that it really is about the aesthetics and my personal preferences. It's not about beating people, it's not about breeding. My personal Pokemon goal is adventure. I like to find new areas, I like to take my time, I like to use the little search of things, and I like to, to dig and sniff and ride the dog and try and find all the little hidden. I'm more about finding stuff than like actually beating the games. And I'll admit, I have not beaten a few of the games because I just keep wandering around, going back and picking berries every day. Like, I don't know, it's just my thing. So I want to hear from a few of you. Okay, up, up here we've got, oh my gosh, we have a card for Trainer, may I say your name? Trainer Blair. We have, let's see, what, uh, Charizard? Houndoom? Uh, the giant syndicate, what's it called? 
Oh, I was just going to say just, um, just the, how cool the characters look. How cool they look. All right. Okay, one more. You got it. I was, I, I don't care about my team. I was going to say plot twist Professor Oak is the leader of all the evil teams. <laughs> oh, no. If you take all of them, you can rearrange it to say Graham. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, all right, so in conclusion, we have had a fantastic discussion about why all of you have chosen the different things. We have explained why no one's better than anyone else, but we all have a connection, and that's what makes this game so cool. Is there a best way to play? No. no. All right, you all pass. <laughs> Yes, so the idea is just like in Pokemon in real life, you can also have pets. You can also use the ideas from the game to enjoy your own life. I know I like to explore, guess what I do? I save money and I travel. And I also eat a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> so there's no wrong way to do any of this. Think about how you experience the world. You guys know your team now. Take this home. Think about why you have your team. If you don't have a team, maybe you make one. And again, there's no best way to live your life. So with that, go to the end. <laughs> Bang. I hope you have learned about these Pokemon adventures. And thank you for your time consideration and your sharing. You guys were a fantastic audience. Final comment. Why have you never mentioned Detective Pikachu yet? Oh. Oh. We haven't had enough time. <laughs> and also, let's give a round of applause for Professor My name again is Riftwing Designs, it's in the con books. If you want to find the video, I'll be putting it on YouTube under that same name. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your convention. You too!